This is FYI, conversations with interesting people about fascinating projects happening in Ohio. Hi, I'm JT and welcome to FYI. Today, we are honored to be talking with an interesting character and I'm also a character. Boy, that's a a loaded word, isn't it? Welcome Archer Thomas of Dayton Children's and I'm also got a co-host and he is the character archer look out for <laughs> look out for dr miller how are you doing, right. Charles miller? Uh, so nice to be with both of you and today we are talking about um michael's house you're an advocate for children archer uh sounds like a uh a busy uh, uh, but necessary uh part of the community so thank you for being part of dayton children's how are you today thank you for having us yeah uh, Happy to be here. Uh, Michael's House. Tell me a little bit about it. So Michael's House is a child advocacy center. Um, We are in Greene County. Um, We serve like as a one-stop shop to help children in our community that are abused. We follow the national model of like a multidisciplinary response to allegations um, of child maltreatment. We're a team of professionals, so that's like law enforcement, Um, Children's services, medical, mental health um, professionals all investigate, provide referrals for services for children. Um, We we focus on the child. We're helping them to feel safe so that they are comfortable and can share about their trauma with a goal of providing services to pave the the path of healing and support the child while working to bring justice through a partnership with um, with the prosecutor's office. Wow. Hey, Archer. So let me ask you a question. You know, there's things that that we as citizens hear and we understand. And unless we've been touched directly in some form or fashion or know of someone, it's still like something that happens over there or to those people. How prevalent is this this problem in, you know, uh, Greene County in particular? So the, the number, the national numbers, which the county is pretty much the same, um, the, the statistics are kind of, um, they're eye-opening, really. So one in seven children are abused or neglect, neglected at some point in time in their lives. One in 10 children will be victims of child um, sexual abuse before they're t- 18 years old. Um, and the, what, the staggering number that, I, that jumps out to me a lot is five children die each day due to abuse in the United States. And 80% wow. of those are under the age of four. Wow. Wow. That, that's, that's, that's powerful. And so you're saying that, you know, our community is tracking pretty closely to the national averages. Is that yeah. what I'm hearing? Yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty much with the national average. Okay. Wow. That's, that's, that's tragic. That's powerful. That's tragic. Um, so when you, when you look at what you're doing there at Michael's house, right, when it gets down to like the everyday, um, walk us through a typical, uh, scenario. So what happens, um, someone will report that something's happened to a child and then they, that goes through either law enforcement or it goes through children's services. And then they, they'll reach out to us here to organize a forensic interview with the child. And then we have a space for them to be able to have that interview so that they feel safe. We've got trained forensic interviewers here that work with the children. Um, and we, we are trying to do everything for all of the family as well. So we'll, we'll meet with the family um, that or the support system that that child has. We'll also have law enforcement and or children services and other people that are here on site. They only are going to meet with that one person and we do things like you know, on closed caption television or, or it's, it's recorded, but they're just one on one with that interviewer where the the other people that are involved and would like to know the information um they get to they get to see that interview that's going on live wow wow so now does your your department or or program partner with like foster care or are you foster care so we we don't do foster care i know that a lot of people they see the word michael's house and think that we might be a residential kind of place so we're not residential we we really are um, the support system in order to try to get that child help. Um, we we don't. I can't answer that next qu- that that other part of it whether or not how we work with foster care. I assume okay. we can find that we can find them resources 
Um, but I think that, that a lot of that is um, children's services that does that part of it to find okay. them a safe, if they have to find a safe place for them to be in. Um, okay. Okay. Their family. But I think that a lot of times we try to keep them with the family. Uh, sounds like uh, kind of a tricky, a tricky job. Uh, I'm sure it's very intense sometimes. You got to wade in between what is abuse and what isn't abuse. And when, you know, how, how do you kind of, what are some of the signs that, you know, you see in families when you say, okay, this is, this is over the line. This is too far. This is definitely abuse that needs, so, you know, recovery. So really any, anything that, <clears throat> what, what I tell people is anything that really makes you feel uncomfortable or you suspect anything that's going on at all whatsoever. So that there's obvious things, um, you know, you might see things on their, on their body or whatever, but then there are, there are other things where kids are um, just acting not normal. But if you suspect anything, you should call law enforcement or your children's services. Um, Cause they're the people that make the ultimate decision, whether or not the child needs to be interviewed and um, what we can do in order to help them out. Okay. Okay. So then when we look at the community at large, you know, um, I know uh, in some, uh, let's call them rescue situations, you know, because of the nature of the of the crisis, you know, a lot of them want to uh, remain below the radar. You know, they're known to those people that are specifically involved with the with the with the trauma. You know, law enforcement definitely and so forth. Is this a scenario, or is your organization one where you could use uh, community help, community support in any way? Yeah, absolutely. So. I mean, the, the biggest way to prevent any of this is really through education. Um, and I think that this is such a difficult topic for people to talk about that they don't, they're not really, um, I, I think maybe sometimes they're hopeful that other, it's not something that's going to happen to them or it's Very much an so. uncomfortable thing that we hope the kids get to have a happy, healthy life, but it's not true for all kids. So it, um, trying to get that education and then passing that education to other people. So we offer um, a training called Stewards of Children. Um, I've been trying to reach out to organizations to offer that, um, as well as, I mean, it, it costs money to do the things that we do. So, I mean, that, that financial piece of it is also helpful. Okay, so then your relationship with children, are you a, 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 an auxiliary or are you, a, a, you need to raise your own grant funds or how does that part work? So you're asking a question that I'm not really sure how to answer. Um, I, I, so I think that we get federal funding. I think that we get state funding. I'm not sure where that money comes from. I know that we've yeah. got our own endowment fund. We we do write for grants. I think that we're a financial partner with Dayton Children's. Okay. Close to that. So we're, they are the, um, the nonprofit that like oversees our finance piece, but I'm, so if, if an organization or the Shriners or an organization wanted to donate specifically to Michael's house, is that possible or is Absol it? Absolutely. We, yeah, we, we really could use the help. Um, and, and if, if it's not, even if it's not monetary, so we have like an Amazon wish list of things that, so as kids come through here, we we'll, we might give them a snack um, or other things that we're trying to like make them feel more, more comfortable while they're being here. Right. So in addition to that front end where we're getting the child in and we're doing that interview, but we're also so we, we have another half of our building where we've got um, we have therapists, um, doctors that are working with children in order to help help them heal. So um, it, it's really a one stop shop for all of it. So from start to finish and trying to trying to get the um, child to feel um, more safe in this world and trying to ha help them be more of that happy, healthy mm -hmm. child is really important for us. I'd like to go back real quick to one of the stats that you give us. Um, national statistics show that five children die every day. Yeah. From, that's just oh, that's oh, heart wrenching. That's heart wrenching. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I, I know one of the things, at least when I'm doing this work, I think about how, um, in addition to that, 80% of those are four and under. So those kids don't really, I mean, a lot of, do, do you know four-year-olds? I mean, I've got a five-year-old and a 15-month-old and he doesn't, he's not able to speak. So he can't, if something were to be happening to him, he wouldn't be able to tell me. So right. 
I mean, it's so, um, so important that we we get educated and that we're keeping our eyes out for those kids that can't speak for themselves. Yeah, well spoken. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I definitely know, you know, before we get too far afield, because also we have to keep our, our eye on the clock. Um, how do people get in touch with you? Do they get in touch with you directly? Do they just call Michael's house? Can you give us that contact info? Yeah. So, I mean, you could call Michael's house directly. Um, our, our number is 937-641-5670. And then our website is michaelshousecac.org. Okay. Can you say it one more time for us? Can you say it for us one more time there? Michaelshousecac.org. Fantastic. And I'm guessing most of the people who contact you are afraid of a child in their neighborhood potentially being abused. Is that is that who contacts you the most? Or so, is it teachers? So we don't get contacted directly from someone suspecting it. You know, when you call and you suspect something that's happening to a child, you need to call the law enforcement or okay. you need to call children's services. And then, the, then law enforcement and children's services works with us to figure out how to do um, to, to be a, as least trauma um, induced on the, on the child. So we're, the way that it used to be in a way it still is in other places is a child um, tells a teacher, for example, and then that teacher tells the principal. So that child has to tell the principal what's going on. And maybe they tell the nurse what's going on. Then they tell the law enforcement person. So they tell the, the, they've told four people already. So it's like them reliving that trauma over and over and over again. And then they have to go see a doctor and all these other things that they may have to do. This really reduces the amount of trauma a child has to get, deal with in regards to having to tell their story. I can't imagine having to tell that story once, let alone what, 10 times to 10 different right. adults that I have no idea anything about. So, and then the more, so this is story, this the is more pain it causes for that child. And then it also, I mean, yeah, it just, it's, it's rough on a child. So this is advocacy work. Yes. What, what I do specifically is advocacy work and the prevention part of it. Yeah. So we're trying to help those that are, that we're, we're the advocates for a child that's going through something yeah. that's very difficult. We're down to the last couple minutes. Are you able to, without uh, getting in trouble, share any success stories? You ever, you ever, uh, you know, are any stories you can tell, or uh, are they all way too private? And I understand. Um, for, I've only been here for what I consider a short time, so I don't think that there's anything. I, mean, I don't think that there's. Any, I mean, I I see things that happen with children that are eye opening, um, that are very that can be very negative, but I also see things that um, end up being very positive without being very specific. If that makes any sense. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah, there is hope. There, there, okay. there, is, there is hope for these children. I think um, wh what's sad is that there's not, a, I, I think there are plenty of kids that are still being abused, but it's not being reported. And us trying to find those kids is really important. And I think that's a, a big piece of this prevention for me is to get the word out so that we get all the kids help. Now, are you also a conduit to uh, agencies that can perhaps provide parenting skills or or resources like that. If there is a family that knew they're in trauma, they could reach out to you guys and if not get help from you directly, maybe get a referral. Yeah, we, we definitely do referrals for all different things so, um, directly for the family or for the children, counseling and other things like that. So yeah, that's something that we definitely can do. Excellent. One more time, we are out of time. What is that website and phone number for folks who uh, would want to get in touch with Michael's house if they have questions or comments and want to get in touch with Archer Thomas? How do they do that? So the number here for the center is 937-641-5670. And our website is www.michaelshousecac.org because we're the Child Advocacy Center. Center. So CAC, that's what that's for. Archer, thank you so much for your work in our community. Absolutely. Keeping kids safe and protected from abuse. We appreciate what you do and so bless to all of you at Michael's hey. house.
it it's the kids that they hear are that who are the heroes. So thank you so much. Amen.